Welcome to the Vox and Venom podcast. Today we've got some interesting and handy and innovative products from Indiegogo. Join in with us and we'll be talking about it all. All right, Matthew. Uh, I don't really have anything interesting to start this off with, but <laughs> I I had planned on asking you a question at the very beginning, but I didn't come up with anything. So let's just jump right into it. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> hey, hey, Jack, here, I got a question for you. All right, do it. Have you ever been on a diet? What kind like of a ever? question is that? Well, because it's, it's going to cycle in. You ever been on a diet? All right. Just curious. So I was on a diet for like three days <laughs> last year. Three I was, days. I went on a diet and, and I was like, no, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> but it was <laughs> what, like what diet a was no it? meat diet. So I was eating. Oh. And, and I, I ate like no sugar at all or anything like that. I was eating right. vegetables and nuts mainly. Oof. And it was That's rough. And I was working outside and stuff and I was like, no, nah, I can't do this. Right. I did I did like the keto diet for like how long did we do it? Like three weeks, something like that. I thought it was longer and than that, but it, it was it was like three or four weeks because we were going on vacation and, and we went off of it and I never got back on it. But it, it's actually a pretty good diet. I I didn't hate it, but it was difficult in some aspects. Just for the adjustment, I guess. I, it's the adjustment period that's always more difficult, but right. It's, it's but anyway, tweaking, I, it's tweaking your um, your metabolism and your the way that your body is expecting things. Right, right. That's the hard part. Which, which speaking of metabolism, so our, our first product of the day is Lumen, which is the the way they say it is hack your metabolism and lose weight, and it's actually pretty interesting. I thought just uh, looking at it and understanding how it works because it's changing the way you diet or the way you even look at dieting because a lot of times we get these fad diets that don't necessarily work for every person because every person has different dietary, whether it's dietary restrictions or dietary just uh, roadblocks that they, they can't do, right. then you're not going to function the same way as everyone else on a particular kind of diet so this is kind of catering can i your can i sure go ahead explain it a a little bit of a different way um this this product helps you know your body better so that it you know what it needs right that's um that's mainly the the whole reason for this this device um but given you know the information you have it suggests what you should eat. So it does, it is a, a diet um, help, I guess is a good way to put it. It helps you to know what to eat instead of right. just, this is what I'm going to eat and my, my body will figure it out. Right. Well, and it's it's understanding how your body needs to diet. Let me put it that way. Because a lot of times we think, well, we want to lose weight, but how are we going about losing weight that's best for our body or best for our health? And this is trying to influence that. So the way that this thing works is it's kind of like a breathalyzer. It's kind of funny, but right, that's you, what you I actually get too. <laughs> yeah, you, you breathe into this little tube thing that senses your CO2 levels or your carbon dioxide levels. So it actually, it, if it's reading high CO2, it means you're burning more carbs in your diet. And if it reads low CO2, it's saying that you're burning more in the body fat. And it's kind of interesting. So what it will do then, once it figures out what kind of, uh, I guess, energy burning you're doing, it's going to determine what it is that you need based on what you're doing. <laughs> right. So let's say you're going for a run and it reads that you're running a little low on energy. Well, then it might say, hey, take a carb boost because you, you need some sort of carbs in order to burn energy when you're running like a 10K or something like that. You, it, you need to be able to burn that kind of energy because fat might start putting you into a into a, a bad state if you're burning too much fat. So it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, um, uh, you- and so here's to kind of put this in perspective. The way that they used to be able to monitor the CO2 emissions of, not CO2, CO2 emissions, emissions, but you know, like you, I mean, in a way, CO2, that's 
technically what it is. Um, yes. To in order to gauge your CO two output, they would put you in this chamber for about sixty minutes, for about an hour, and they would monitor the CO two output that you have and take all that data and then put it in the log. This takes one breath. Right. Which <laughs> right, which maybe that decreases accuracy, I don't know, but according to them, they they seem to feel pretty confident as far as the accuracy of the data, so well, the, it's the, pretty neat. What they've done is they've gone into some university testing centers um right. and they've they've actually monitored the CO2 coming out of tanks just to see, you know, this is this percent CO2. This is this percent CO2. This is this percent CO2. We already know that. So let's go, go ahead and put it through Lumen and see what it registers. And it's mm-hmm. registering pretty darn accurate. Right. So that's kind of how they, they gauge to that. And I don't see why it would be any different if you're breathing into it rather than pushing it through a, through a tube from a tank. <laughs> Right, which, by the way, for those of you who are like, well, I've never heard of people doing this, this was actually really mostly done for athletes right. over the years. And this this is how like professional athletes would determine how best to diet in order for to get their maximum performance. And so th- this is kind of taking that and then transforming it for daily use, which is pretty neat. I, I-, I like the way that this I- – I like the way this looks. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So now, as far as the way that it physically looks, it, it just looks like a black, uh, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but it looks like a little black tube, like a mouthpiece tube, that almost like a breathalyzer, sort of, but go. not quite it, the same. <laughs> it looks like a sax of, or a uh, uh, clarinet mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah, it does. But, without uh, re- and it's without just, the reed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make noises when you blow into it. <laughs> That'd be pretty That'd awesome. Be I would love that. <laughs> But uh, it's just like a little black um, little piece that's – it's 102 millimeters by 41.5 millimeters by 33.3 millimeters. So, you know, you can do the math on that. It's pretty small. and It fits which, right in your hand, no problem. Yes. And it's also has a rechargeable battery that you can sit it on a dock that's uh, plugged up USB-C on, on the docking station. And so uh, – Overall, it's just it's well made. I, yeah. I like that. Also, it's a Bluetooth connection to your smartphone, and then you can view all of your data through an app. And then through that app, you can start doing meal planning. You can start doing pre slash post workout recommendations. You can track your sleep, your nutrition, your workout. So that there's a lot of different things that you can kind of make out of this into just making your health, fitness, your your eating habits just better. Right. So, um, that being said, uh, well, there's uh, last thing that I'll say about the, the looks of it. There's one button on it, which you push and then you breathe it in and then it translates the data to your phone and then it'll crunch the numbers and then pipe out your thing. Um, that being right. said, it is $200 on Indiegogo with the retail of $300. So it just, right. you know, it's a little bit pricey, but I don't think that it's crazy given the amount of, you know, ability it has to help you. And and it seems like it would help you for, for a long while. So, you know, investing, you know, okay, just as a, for instance, my mom, she had a really hard time losing weight for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And she was super discouraged about it because she tried so many different things. She ended up spending like $500 on a dietary supplement and it was able to get mm. the weight off, but she's just like, I do not want to have to spend that money again. So she keeps the weight off. Yeah. Doing something like this, it's not unreasonable to fork out a little bit one time. Right. And that's just kind of my thinking on it. Well, and I like the idea of changing your your health and your your general health habits Mm -hmm. just based on what you have today or, or what you could have today without having to go and buy like a dietary supplement or buy some sort of drink mix or something like that. You are 
just changing the way that you eat. You're changing your lifestyle a little bit. And that that's the way that you should diet. And yes. so just to speak to the I don't know, the veracity the of this uh product. I don't know if that's the right word, but they they have over 300 beta users at this point in time or at least they have and on average within the first 30 days they've had 6.8 pounds lost. So that's first 30 days. So that that's good results. Now if I were to have it I would hope to gain about 6.8 pounds <laughs> in 30 days. But that that's me. It's not <laughs> I'm me. Just a, I, I'm, I'm just a skinny freak. <laughs> but yeah, so it's you it's a that, really neat product. You got that Kaufman metabolism going on. I've got some nuts metabolism that I can't. I I, I have to work to gain weight, but yeah, you can it's still early. Now. It's still early. <laughs> like, just give me a few years. I'm, I yeah. might put it on. Well, I mean, so both of your parents are in good shape, so I don't. It's it's true. Yeah. So, anyways, and, but uh, <laughs> with that, with the success of this product, uh, they've raised one point seven million dollars of a fifty thousand dollar goal. So they're they're. Uh, over a million dollar project, which we've only had a couple of those in the past. Really impressive. And it's only got about a day left. So if you want one of these, go and grab it. And uh, $200 is the deal of the day. So That's 30% off, you know, uh, after the campaign's over, it's going to be $300 plus shipping. Right. So uh, I think they're they're running shipping in the U.S. for $5 and then uh, $19 for the rest of the world. Plus, there's like two little fees that go on it in certain places. So um, you can look into that if, if you're in some of those areas. But $5 shipping for the U.S. and $19 everywhere else, um, plus whatever other fees are added depending on where you are. And then um, last thing I'll say is I was actually looking for a battery life on this. And I it just yeah. because I was interested, not because it's supremely necessary to have a crazy big battery life. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't find one, <laughs> but uh, that's yeah. that's one thing that I wouldn't mind knowing because right, you know, if you don't have to pack your charger when you go on a trip, but you still want to bring it, that would be mm-hmm. ideal. Uh, sure, but I mean, honestly, you're going to use it once a day, so. Yeah, well, and I thought it was interesting. The way one one of the beta testers said it was they basically just took that and replaced their scale. So instead of measuring their weight on a daily basis, they started just measuring their metabolism burning and then just, you know, adjusted their health habits based on that. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So kind of a neat concept. Moving on. So <laughs> I think these guys... The, the next guys are going to have some trademark issues, maybe. But they call themselves Passport Pro. Uh, they, they're they the, supposedly the safest global travel adapter. So this is a pretty basic concept. There's, there's not a whole lot of complication to this. But it's a travel adapter that can charge up to five devices at one time and is compatible with a wide variety of different plugs which it can accept. So if you know the different kinds of plugs, which honestly I I don't, but uh, it can accept A, B, C, E, F, G, I, J, L, N, and O plugs. (laughs) Basically, it can accept plugs for the majority of the world. Basically, it's the alphabet plug. Yes. (laughs) And uh, I thought what I thought was interesting, apparently there's a couple of these on the market I didn't realize. It's got this little slide on the side of it where you can push out whatever plug you want. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. I I like the concept because it's way more convenient to be able to do that than have to like add a different attachment to the end every time. Right. Now they do have different attachments for the ends for when you need that different plug sometimes, but it does have that. Now it, it does have a few other things. It, it doesn't just accept like a regular plug end on the front end. You can change that end as well as far as the female end, but then you can also plug in USB-C fast char- or it's USB C PD fast charging. So it's got those ports as well on the side, which is 
a nice little addition. Like I said, it can charge up to five devices at one time. Now, I don't know how much draw <laughs> the, the outlet's going to accept, because at some point in time, you're going to overload that outlet. Right. But it it can take up to five devices at one time. So if you do overload the outlet and uh, you know, you're worried about overloading it to where you're going to hurt your devices, the block actually has a governor in it. And it is it what's it called a governor? That's called a, uh, a well, fuse. it's a fuse in a ground. Like it's got a ground connection, and then it has a resettable fuse. And the the fuse, it, it's almost like a GFCI outlet, where when when it does hit a power surge, it's gonna flick off rather than you know hurting your devices. So when it flicks off, it disconnects the connection. And then you can actually reset it with a little button, just like a GFCI outlet. Right. So I thought that, yeah, it's a good concept. It's it's well made, it seems like, as well. Um, mm-hmm. They've got three USB-C uh, fast chargers on the side with, uh, what's the what's the fourth one? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to I think it's it a is. mini, I think it's a micro USB. But it's the new kind, I think. I'm trying to remember what it is. It might be. Is it a Type C connection? It, I think it might be Type C. Yeah, because it's like rounded on both sides. I'm trying. Right. To That's going to frustrate me. Keep going. I'm well, going to find it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, like you said, it's got the 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 reset on the fuse. But it, how many times can it do that? It can do it up to ten thousand times without a fuse replacement. So. I'm I'm assuming that's correct. It seems like it's more durable than like your general, you know, uh, fuses that you would have in, either in your, in an old car or or in a lot of other like outlet plugs. But I uh, it would kind of suck if it wore out because these aren't super cheap for being in an, an, a just a basic adapter because you can pick up a lot of adapters for really cheap and they they'll be generic brand and whatever. But this is being name brand and then having those extra safety features. It's $35 for one and $59 for two on Indiegogo. So that's not really cheap for an adapter. But if you travel a lot, if you go to a lot of different countries, it's kind of legit. Yeah. Now, okay, did, did you find out? Yeah, it's called USB PD. Okay, yeah. So, okay. That, that's what I mentioned before. I guess that's the um, that's the fast yeah, charging so that's, port. That's the fourth one. Um, there's there's the three uh, USB ports. The USB standards. Or f- yeah, the f- four USB standard ports, and then the USB PD. Yeah. So with that, they've raised over one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. This is actually completed. They funded on Sunday, and. They raised one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, which was four hundred and sixteen percent of their, you know, goal. So they've done very well, and they'll be on the market at some point. Now they don't have like a retail price listed. I would assume that the price is going to be about what they have here on Indiegogo. I think they're mainly just selling it on Indiegogo, and it it seems like, like I said, this is a product for those people that just travel all the time, and. Uh, it's it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's it's definitely a good idea. I, I would get one if I traveled. Yeah, I don't know that I would spend the thirty five dollars for it personally. Well, if you're gonna be, I don't travel enough, right? If you're gonna be traveling like all the time, then thirty five dollars wouldn't be a bad investment. Yeah, true. But that's what I was saying, though. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, so let me, uh, before we move on to the next one, let me just say real quick, thank you, first of all, for listening so far. We would really appreciate it if you click on that little subscribe button and stick with us. We do post twice every week. Like today, we talk about products. We do that every Tuesday. And then on Fridays, we talk about topics, and we just go into some current events in the tech world today. All right, so let's move on to the Wonder 360S1. You want to tell them about that? So the Wonder 360S1, it is a another, because uh, we've talked about them before, but it's another uh, 360 uh, camera. And uh, it's it's fairly small. have seen a lot of these lately. Yeah, we have. And it's, it's like we said, it's like we say all the time, um, 
you know, things tend to come in spurts. So right it's now true. we're on a 360 camera binge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that's the right word to use. Um, yeah, that's the right word. So I'll take it. <laughs> it is, uh, it's very easy to use. Um, it's, it's all in one, um, with the cloud service and everything. Um, it, uh, does the real time in camera stitching, which is handy. Um, and then there's, uh, tracking, um, like you can lock onto the target, uh, which is, which is really nice for, for events and stuff like that. So you don't have to be sitting there paying attention to your camera. You can just be, um, you know, have the camera there and choose what it wants to follow. Yeah. Basically a set and forget. Right. And that's exactly, that's always, that's always nice when you don't want to miss a moment. Right. So, yeah. Um, it does include some, some stabilization, which is, which is handy, especially if you have it mounted like to your helmet or something when you're doing some, um, like motocross or, or skateboarding or, um, there's, there's also a, a waterproof case you can get, so you can hook it to your surfboard even if you wanted to. Um, but it's, it's really nice to, to be able to use the 3d, um, and then transport that to the cloud. Um, and actually on their campaign, they had a, a guy talking about how he used it. Um, and he went through just different places that he really liked and I thought this was really interesting. I don't know if you noticed it, Matthew, but he went through yeah. a bunch of different places in the city and he actually made, um, Minecraft world. Minecraft out of world. It. Yeah. I was trying to yeah. say Skyrim, but it's not Skyrim. <laughs> no, um, it's not Skyrim. So yeah, no, but like you can, it, it'll go straight up to the cloud. It'll, it'll, you know, remember, not remember, but it'll store what you've, what you've videoed and then you can implement right. that wherever you want to. It's got, it's got that, um, software that you can use to be able right, to. It, cur- it, it actually does 3D scanning, which right is kind is pretty interesting. So I guess it, it determines depths or mm-hmm. depths of field, and it does like a 3D scan of exterior and interior environments, whatever you want to do. Which actually that that's something that I was looking at early on in civil engineering because I thought it would be super useful for doing. 3d scans of like wastewater treatment plants and things like that and be able to get an idea of where piping is and then be able to model it all so that's way way off left field but the this kind of thing is kind of in that direction as well as being a 360 camera right it's so well the, I, the I thing that was is interesting. It's, it's just super versatile you can yes. use it for recreation. Um, they had another another uh, video on there about this guy that was using it in his gymnastics class, and he said it, you know, set and forget, like Matthew said. Um, he said it, and it followed the people as they were doing their routines, and he was able to play it back to them right there because it's you know uploads to the cloud immediately, and he's able to you know, show his students what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. It's, it's very, it's very user friendly and, uh, you know, very, a lot of, a lot of different capabilities that can be taken advantage of, uh, depending on what your needs are. But that, I think that scanning thing is, is one of the most intriguing parts of it because (laughs) you can do so much with it, but go ahead. Right. It it can also just for the couple other features, it can also live stream with Wi-Fi. And it's super light and quite small, so it's a little bit bigger than a GoPro, but it may, almost like two GoPros stacked on top of each other. That, that's about the size of it. And it has a status screen on the front of it for you know all the important stuff like recording time, battery status, and stuff like that. But it also has a 1,200 milliamp hour battery, which I thought this was interesting. 1,200 milliamp hour is kind of small if I thinking of this right which kind of worries me because when you're talking about a camera that's recording for long periods of time you need a pretty significant battery Bat- cameras burn through batteries and now they do say that they're compatible with mainstream action cam batteries so i assume that they're about the same equal with that but there's there's just no data on the lifetime of the battery which not not on their campaign anyway that i could find which i was a little bit disappointed on but so I, I'm a little concerned about the life of that battery. 
Yeah, and that was one of my main concerns. Is just I don't know how long that's going to last. And that's, right. I mean, when you're when you're doing an action uh, sequence, battery life is one of your main concerns. Mm hmm. Because... Yeah. The the other thing that I don't love, and and I'm, I probably harped on this multiple times. I don't like subscription stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, especially when it comes to these kinds of things. If it, if it's a subscription with Microsoft or if it's a subscription with Adobe or something like that, it, you can trust that they're going to be in business for the next 10 years. You can't trust that these guys are going to be in business for the next 10 years. I, I, I don't know Wonder 360 well enough to, to know that they'll be in business for the next 10 years. So when they say that it includes a cloud service subscription for a year or two years, you know, based on whatever package you get on their Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. You know, maybe if they're still around in two years. Right. So, uh, th- those always make me nervous. I don't like subscription based stuff, but with that being said, they do have that cloud service. So maybe um, that's a good thing. Maybe that's not. So yeah, I don't let know. me, let me touch on the battery one more time. Because yeah, sure. I, because I did find a little bit on it. Um, okay. It does have a removable battery that lasts yes. for 2.4 hours, for up to 2.4 hours. So oh, it's really? Probably, I didn't see yeah. that. So it's it's probably going to be lasting closer to an hour and a half to two hours when you're using it. Right. Um, but it does have the removable aspect of it, so you can bring two or three of them. Yes. Yes, and that's definitely a bonus. So that that's not bad. That, that's better than I thought. So, well, I'll, I'll give them that one. Now, <laughs> as far as memory, it takes a micro SD card, so it doesn't take a standard SD. You're, you'd have to have a micro SD for it, which makes sense. Right. It's like an action cam. And then it's got a, as far as recharge, the rechargeable battery, it's going to be by micro USB 2.0. So. Yes. Now, if you want to buy one, it's $159 on Indiegogo. They're saying $300 retail which is a pretty decent jump there in price. Now, I I don't know if that's a decent... I mean, it seems like a decent price to me if we're thinking about, like, paying for a GoPro. Yeah. I mean, what do GoPros go for these days? Like, $250? I think $250. I think that's around the price. So, $300 retail... Seems pretty close, especially when you're talking about a 360 degree camera and that, that has three hundred different capabilities. Comes with a year of the cloud service, right? And the battery, the battery charger, a strap, a uh, a handheld. Um, what what's it called? The the well, like a selfie stick. It's not a selfie stick, but it's it's just a, a handheld holder for it. Um, that that screws <laughs> okay. in with the yeah with the camera screw, um, sure. A tripod, the waterproof case, um, and then a micro USB card. So, um, right, it, it it is a substantial kit that you get for that three hundred dollars. Um, mm-hmm. but if you the the campaign only has four days left. So if if this se- seems intriguing to you, now would definitely be the time to buy because it is uh fifty three percent off right now at one hundred and forty dollars instead of three hundred. Yeah, that's it's a significant savings, so for sure. You definitely want to grab it then. Now, moving on to I guess our last product of the day. Nils. Nils? Niels? Do you know how to pronounce it? I just they, said they don't Nils. say. Right. I they, mean, they don't say N-I-L-S because the video S says Nils. The video is probably the cheesiest slash cringiest video I've seen. Well not 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 that, that you've seen, but it is pretty be, bad. Yeah, that, that might be a little too extreme. It's very cheesy and cringy, though. It's, and this is this is the message. I have a charger. Do you want a date? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes. And so it's so Nils is what we'll call it is a wearable charging cable. So I I, th- I feel like we've seen this before. This this kind of rings one of those bells back in my brain that says I've seen this before. I think, but I think the only thing different about this really is the the braided band. Yeah, maybe. So just to give our audience what it is, it's a USB to. So it can be a USB to Lightning or Type C or micro USB end. 
So it can be one of those three, but a USB on one end and then, you know, one of your char- your basic uh, smartphone charging cables that you would need. So it uses magnets to clamp a bracelet together. And so you have both plug ends that actually fit into each other and then they also hold together using a magnet, a rare earth magnet. And then the cable is actually made out of a DuPont Kevlar fiber braid and it's supposed to be just super durable basically and it does come in single or double loops because as you can imagine if it's just a single loop around your wrist it's going to be quite short right and uh, you don't necessarily need a super long cable but no you know having that extra space is is handy but single right. or double loop i mean you're you're thinking 4 or 8 inches so it's not like it's going right. to be super short or super long <laughs> right Yep, so if it, if it were me, I would get a double loop just because I, I would want a little bit of extra length. Yeah. The, the single loop would be super short, and I don't I don't love the idea of that much shortness. I want to be able to at least place it somewhat away from whatever it is that I'm plugging it into just because uh, I want to have that flexibility. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it's also various lengths. Like, the, the lengths that they give you, I, I can't tell you exact lengths because... It varies based on your wrist measurement. So whatever size you get, they have like an extra small, a small, a medium, a large, and then they have a small, medium, and large of the double. And so th- there's just a lot of options that, that it might be as far as the lengths go. Now, the price, th- this is what kind of made me chuckle a little bit. Did you did you look at the price? I'm about to. So it's $24 on Indiegogo. Oh, and then goodness. they say... $120 retail. And I was like, no. <laughs> no. I'm not paying $120 for a four inch cable, basically. Like, that's just nuts. But that's, $24 that's on Indiegogo th- makes that's sense. That's for three. The $120? Yeah. As far as, like, buying it on Indiegogo? Yeah. No, that's for three. Um, three nils. No, if you look, it says forty dollars. Oh, you're right. Twenty four dollars for three nils or one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and twenty dollars retail. This is so confusing. Why do they have this like this? Well, and then they say you can get one nil for eight dollars retail thirty, and then they say you can get two for sixteen retail eighty. That makes no sense. So you may as well get two two individually and get them for 60 instead of getting two together and getting them for 80. Right. <laughs> Their math makes no sense <laughs> on this campaign. It's I, my mind is blown now. <laughs> I feel like they just wrote numbers in. And they're like, oh, okay, absolutely. you can get 20 nils for $160, retail 800. Even so, I wouldn't pay $30 for this. Like that that still seems ridiculous to me. It's it's the smallest cable ever. Right, but it's, you know, kind of neat with the, you know, the way it looks and it's handy cuz it's oh, right it's, there and sure. whatever, but I wouldn't definitely pay I definitely wouldn't pay uh $30 Tw- for one. I, I might 20 pay, bucks is my line. Uh, yeah, I was going to say I might pay 10, but Yeah, 20 20 bucks would be my max line on that. It does look Just, nice um with yeah. the with the braided leather around the band and then the the uh What's what's that metal called? It's like uh, I I don't know what the metal is actually. I'm not. It looks I'm like so an sure. aluminum or something. It probably but, is, but it's it's like matte colored. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, I mean it, it looks nice. I like the looks of it. it. It looks nice and classy. Now they say that it's water resistant, but it's not waterproof, uh, so you can't go swimming with it on, which might be. A little bit of a problem for some people, because that that would probably be easy to forget. Honestly, yeah, I, it would but have been I mean, nice to have. But I mean, if you jump in the pool and then you're like, "Oh shoot, I still have my bracelet on. Take it off. It's not a huge deal." But if you're going to be swimming probably for not. two hours, that'll probably hurt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, so for their pricing strategy, they actually have a a section called pricing strategy. And they do something I wouldn't do. But they say, number one, because we are effing insane. 
Okay. <laughs> number yeah. two, that's what crowdfunding means, right? And then number three, we believe in the quality of our products. I don't understand why that gives you why that tells you why they gave that kind of pricing strategy and then also their pricing strategy doesn't make sense <laughs> as we've talked about but anyway with that being said we've chatted long enough about this <laughs> they've they've raised two hundred and seventy three thousand dollars and that's two thousand seven hundred percent of their goal because they were already funded last Thursday. So th this project has already been funded, but it is, I think it is still available for uh, backing at this point or, or purchasing at this point as a perk on Indiegogo, because Indiegogo does things differently. But y you can get it. It's uh, Like I said, they've raised $273,000, so they've raised a lot of money, and uh, it looks like a decent product. I, I like the idea of it. At the price that it is, I think it's worth it. At the price of the the Kickstarter, yeah. Yeah. It's only $8. Or the Indiegogo campaign, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, tw 24 bucks for three is awesome. Like, I, I would get three. I'd get one. I mean, but, 24 yeah. for three, one for eight, two for 16. I guess that's... It's the same price all the way across the board, so You're not getting they, you don't get a better deal by getting more. But I think getting three makes sense, just because you might break one, and this, this company might not be making these for forever. So, true. I, I think it's a neat. Very true. I think it's a neat concept. I don't think that it's new. I feel like I've seen it before. Like I said, now as far as the magnetic connection, I don't know if that's been done that much. So I, I do like that connection. I think magnetic connections are nice. I think they're clean, and I think they've done it well. I think it looks nice. Yeah. So no, it, it definitely looks very professional. Um, mm -hmm. as far as the USB goes, um, it's just the one-sided USB. It's not the whole encased. Um, I don't necessarily know if that's has a different name or, or anything like that, but um, do you know what I'm talking about with just the, the inside yes. portion of the USB? Um, right. I have I actually have a cable like that, and it there's not a problem with it at all. So it is still 100% no. you know, functional. Yep, yep. Anyways. All right, so I guess we'll start closing it up. But let me just mention real quick. So last week... We had an awesome discussion, or at least I had an awesome discussion with Pete Pang with Firefly, the Firefly case from Kickstarter and Indiegogo, who that's raised oh, about two hundred thousand dollars across the board between the two campaigns, and it was a really fascinating discussion. We we talked a lot about antenna technology and how his case uh, amplifies your cell phone signal and things like that. Really, really fascinating discussion. If you want to go back and listen to that, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I will give like a short apology for the clicking noises through that uh, podcast. That is me clicking my mouse because I was keeping it awake and, and marking my questions and things like that. So we're, we're going to try to mitigate that in future podcasts. So I apologize for that in advance if you haven't listened to it already. And if you have listened to it, sorry for all the clicking noises. <laughs> now, with that being said, thank you for listening today. And like I said before, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio, really appreciate it. Go ahead and click that subscribe and follow along with us twice every week, every Tuesday and Friday. Also, you can find us on social media at facebook.com forward slash Vox and Venom Tech. And you can also find us on Twitter at Vox and Venom. And we are being a little bit more active and a little bit more proactive on Twitter. And then you can also find us on Instagram, Vox and Venom. And you can follow us over there. And we put some of the big updates up there, like, you know, like the the podcast, <laughs> well, especially when we put up like a video on YouTube, which we do have a video over on YouTube. So go check us out on YouTube. Yes. You can subscribe over there if you want. And uh, it's a pretty darn legit video. Don't you think? I thought it came out fantastic, but I I'd like some more feedback on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So go check out the video over on our Vox and Venom uh, YouTube channel and you can subscribe there too, if you want. And you know, we will keep posting videos because we think they're pretty awesome. Yeah. 
Now, if you do know a developer that is interested in either coming on to the show and talking with us about their innovative tech, uh, we're all about that. Or if you think they would be willing to shoot us a test product, please uh, shoot us a direct message over on Twitter and we will try to respond to those as much as possible. That would be that would be huge. That's something that we want to take advantage of a little bit more. Anything else, Chad? Um, I think that's it. Uh, I have one other thing, but I think I will talk about it on Friday. So, all right, we'll save it. All right, Just well, a thank you. Teaser for Friday. <laughs> all right, well, thank you once again for listening to our podcast. We really appreciate it. Have a fantastic night, and we will see you on Friday. Thank you.